well. So I've been thinking these days when you come and talk about the web, you really want to think about not big data, but broad data. There's a lot out there, not just in each individual holding, but throughout all these holdings all over the place, all starting to be out there. So when we talk about big data, we often talk about these three Vs. We talk about volume, petabytes, terabytes, who's got the yottabyte coming. But uh, we talk about velocity. You just take those same words and you put a time unit behind them. Petabytes per day. No, no, I've got, I've got uh, terabytes per minute. But we aren't yet talking about data sets per hour. But in fact, that's what the world is starting to go to. So the variety thing is growing very quickly. Now, I'm a professor, so you have to let me digress for a minute. Um, when we started playing with the web back in the early 90s, you couldn't predict the growth. And what we found is over the first four years, we went from about 50 websites to a million websites. It took about four years. And then the growth really took off. We had a lot of exponential stuff. Well, let me show you just government data. So the US government on the data.gov website released 57, web, uh, 57 data sets, most of them from the EPA, in June of 2009. My research group has been scraping government websites. On the uh, right-hand side, you can see the <clears throat> data sets. We've got over a million of them now, four years later. They're from 192 catalogs in 43 countries, 24 different languages. If you look at the little map in the bottom, I'm struck by the fact that the lighter colors mean less data. That's all in that south that we just heard is going to be growing. So we see a lot coming online, literally millions of data sets, and this is just the government. So what I want to say today is that what the web did to us in terms of documents is it taught us that we needed to think about them in a different way, and that gave rise eventually to search, to creating small data, small documents, blogging, microblogging, et cetera. We see in, in data that there's some things that haven't been in the traditional database discussion that have to be out there. So discovery, and I don't mean here discovering something in my data set. I mean, what data is out there? I want to learn something from my cu customer about what's going to be the weather trend in Southeast Asia six months from now. The data is there. You just got to find it, right? I want to integrate that data. I want to pull it together. I want to pull that data in with my data. I want to grab three or four things. I don't want to build a data warehouse. I want to grab three things quickly and say, do I see a trend in this? Right? I want to get that answer in, in minutes or hours or days, not months. Right? And I'm not going to be running that repeatedly necessarily, so I don't, I don't want to do the engineering of a data solution. I want to grab the stuff and pull it together. Then I want to visualize it. I want to be able to then take what I've created as a new set of integrated data and publish that back out. So where the semantics comes in is years ago when we started the semantic web, I coined a, a slogan, a little semantics goes a long way. And I want to try to convince you that in the data world, that's how we should be thinking, not about very complex stuff. So for example, when we talk about discovery, finding data sets, we could talk about needing high-end artificial intelligence and doing really complex reasoning. And my research group does play with that. But what we can do a lot better is get good metadata out there. So here's a, a schema.org proposal to get some data set metadata out embedded on all the description pages from uh, data sets. Then you can use standard search engines, some of the new emerging semantic and faceted browsers. So again, get the stuff out there. This is currently a proposed uh, schema.org. Should be out soon. Lend your uh, support. Integration is really a place where you've got to have some uh, semantics. So when we're bringing documents together, words tend to have a lot of context with respect to the other words on the page. Data doesn't. So if I try to link the number 1118 to the number 118 in a different data set, they may or may not mean the same thing. They may be completely different. So I want to bring that stuff together. I need some semantics. So what do I do? Well, I could build big knowledge models, but even better, let's just get some good careful URI design going. Let's make it so that when you define some things, so when uh, health.data.gov puts out information about hospitals, they use a standard naming scheme. If you look out the window and you see a hospital, and you understand this naming scheme, you can go find its web page. And you can go find its machine-readable web page that you can dereference to get lots more information. Or uh, the one on the other side is the page for the Department of Energy 
again, we're organizing some of the data sets at data.org by the communities, by the agencies, et cetera, so that people can come there and find them much more easily. Okay? Visualization is something a lot of people here know a lot about, so I'm not going to spend much time on it. But if you think about it, a lot of what the visualization challenge is when you're looking at data is creating a context around it. How do I say what's happening in that data? Think about when you can combine several different data sets. So the picture here is of a whole lot of different data mashups that have been done off of the government data. So what we're looking at is how do you bring data together from the US and the UK to tell what's going on in foreign aid? How do you take data about what's going on in agency budgets and look in the New York Times, which is online and easy to search for, to find what was going on in those agencies at the time? So when you bring the data, particularly the structured big data, together with the, the world of the web, which is a lot of unstructured data, other kinds of data, et cetera, you can bring things together that expose errors in data sets, that help you see trends, that let you do things through the visualization. Now, the semantics you need there is just, again, that ability to grab some stuff quickly and pull it together creates sort of your custom view that you're then going to uh, visualize. So again, little bit of semantics. Uh, extraction, right? So if you want to extract data from your data set, you can do it by just publishing out the numbers. Just dump the CSV somewhere and someone else can go through all the trouble of figuring out what your data set meant. Or you can do a little bit of extra work and say, when I dump this thing, let me use a standard URI like I was talking about before. Let me point at something that has some meaning there. So for example, this is something called DBpedia. DBpedia is the information in Wikipedia made available in a more machine-friendly standard. So now what happens is you put my name in the thing as a string, everyone has to guess whether you're talking about me. If you put a link to this DBpedia page somewhere, then they all know you mean me and not someone else with the same name. And Wikipedia covers millions of topics. It's used all over the place. So extraction, some semantic. So I haven't described anything that requires really challenging AI, anything that really is pushing technology. What we're looking at is getting better data out there so that we can all cooperate in sharing data the way we cooperate in sharing the other kinds of information on the web. So Tim Berners-Lee has proposed what he calls the five-star scheme for linked data. First is get it out there. Right? You make your data public. Anything you, you're willing to share, share it. You may not know what value it has, someone else will. And in turn, they'll share something which you'll figure out the value of. Make it available in a machine-readable format. Use an open standard to get that third star. Use URIs to name things. If you've seen any theme in what I've been doing, is it's that little bit of semantics we need is just the ability to uniquely point at things on the web or the ability to get some metadata that tells us what's where. And then start doing a little bit of extra effort to start linking things together, and suddenly you have a web effect. And new technologies, new things can be written to try to bring that together. So, the summary is, again, discovery needs a little semantics, not a lot, just good metadata design, something we've been doing in these communities, in the data world, in the uh, web world, we need to bring those together. Integration, a little semantics. Visualization, a little semantics. Extraction, a little bit of work in that semantics, and data becomes much more shareable. So with that, I'm going to end thanking my research group and thanking you all for having me here.